Now we have Mohamed here to, to present his research about energy efficiency in machine type communications. His research is uh, uh, in, the, in the EEIoT project. And I think he started uh, uh, the research together with the project itself. So I think it's, going, it's very nice that he can present and then you can all see what he has been doing uh, in, in our project and, and he's from Nolu. And so the floor is yours, Mohammed, and then you can have a brief presentation of yourself quickly for the everybody knows who are you. So your your mic is off. So uh, yes. Uh, good. good afternoon, everyone, or depending on where you are. Uh, so uh, I am uh, Mohammed Shihab. Uh, the doctoral student uh, in the University of Oulu and I'm working with Hirli and uh, this is uh, I'm going to present uh, today uh, uh, some of our research uh, directions in the energy efficient uh, Internet of Things uh, project so let's start with the presentation So I suppose everyone can see the presentation now, right? Could you put in full screen, please? Okay. Is it clear now? Yes, thank you. Okay. So this presentation is about energy efficiency in machine type communication. And I'm going to talk uh, about uh, some of our research directions in the uh, last year. Um, in in this topic. So uh, to start with, uh, uh, the advent of the Internet of Things uh, has led to a surge in the number of uh, devices uh, aiming to realize the 2030 vision of data-driven societies. And this uh, Internet of Things require uh, uh, the devices to be connected with high reliability and extreme low latency with limited energy consumption. As we know that these kind of devices are uh, mostly uh, dependent on battery. So they have limited energy uh, sources. Uh, so in, in this work, we, we are going to study the effective energy efficiency of ultra reliable low latency communication uh, with short packet transmission. And um, another topic is uh, that we present a fast uplink grant uh, scheme for Internet of Things uh, devices that are stimulated by, Mar by Markovian events. And this uh, fast uplink grant scheme aims to reduce the latency and collision uh, of these devices. And uh, lastly, we present a UAV assisted approach uh, to minimize the peak energy consumption of IOD devices. Uh, that are served by a UAV aggregator in um, uh, in a UAV platform. So the first uh, part is about effective energy efficiency of uh, URLLC uh, with short packets. So to start with, uh, this is Polyanisky's equation about uh, the achievable rate in uh, finite block length. And this is the achievable rate, which depends on the um, error probability and uh, the block length n, um, uh, and this is r. So we have this term here, which is the channel dispersion term, uh, which reduces the achievable rate with respect to the channel's capacity. And uh, we have the effective capacity metric, which is uh, defined as the maximum arrival rate that can be supported by a certain network, uh, subject to a certain latency constraint and uh, this latency constraint is, de uh, is determined by the delay exponent theta and uh, the relationship between uh, theta and the effective capacity is given by this equation. And is the probability that the delay will exceed a certain delay bound delta uh, uh, equal to this term here. And uh, then we define the effective energy efficiency as the ratio between this effective capacity and the transmission power or the power consumption. And as we can see here that the effective energy efficiency is given by the ratio, the numerator 
uh, is the effective capacity and the denominator is the power consumption for the linear power consumption model. So we have zeta, the inverse drain efficiency of the amplifier and PC is the hardware circuit co uh, component. Um, so in, in our work, we define the effective energy efficiency um, in, um, in a closed form approximation and it's given by this formula here and it's a function of these uh, parameters uh, epsilon and n and uh, and theta and it's given by upper incomplete gamma functions and uh, we deduce that there is a unique maximizer uh, error probability for the effective energy efficiency so this is the optimum error probability which maximizes the uh, effective energy efficiency uh, of uh, short packet transmission and is given by this equation or the argument which minimizes this uh, term and uh, the optimum power allocation uh, which maximizes the effective energy efficiency is given by this uh, the solution to this equation uh, where j dash is given by this term here uh, and then we uh, move forward to the non-empty buffer probability uh, scenario where uh, some nodes are uh, supposed not to be uh, transmitting all the time but sometimes they are idle so let's say that we have this uh, scenario here uh, that uh, the buffer is uh, uh, transmitting at these two instants and then it becomes silent and then uh, the transmitter is transmitting here in the black instance and then it becomes silent so the, bu the buffer is not always full there are instances where the buffer is empty. And in this case, the effective energy efficiency uh, is calculated from this formula. And we have this extra term here, which is lambda, the arrival rate over expectation of R, which is the achievable rate. So this is called the non-empty buffer probability and is given by this ratio and multiplied by the transmission power here. Uh, then in order to uh, maximize the effective energy efficiency, uh, we formulate this uh, optimization problem and uh, subject to these constraints. The first constraint is the stability, uh, the Q-stability constraint, which is effective capacity should be larger than the arrival rate. And uh, the second term is the, the delay constraint, uh, uh, con uh, the delay constraint. And the, the third term is the power constraint. So transmission power should be less than a certain threshold. And fourth term is the, if uh, the error probability should be less than a certain uh, target. Uh, so solution to this problem um, will come later, but first let's, uh, let's uh, see um, how the effective energy efficiency looks like in reality. When we, when we plot it uh, as a function of the SNR, uh, row, uh, then it shows that uh, uh, effective energy efficiency is a quasi-concave uh, function of the SNR uh, whenever we change the theta or n or, or any value of uh, block length or theta. Um, and also uh, this curve shows that lemma one is accurate, the, the one that we have seen here in the beginning is accurate. And uh, the second curve here shows that the effective energy efficiency is a concave function of epsilon. And there is a unique maximizer which uh, maximizes the effective energy efficiency. So uh, there is some certain, some value of epsilon here which uh, causes the energy efficiency to be maximized. It's not simply that we reduce the epsilon value then we increase the reliability. This is not simply energy efficient, but there is a, a certain value here that increases the effective energy efficiency. And this curve uh, shows also that the empty buffer probability model uh, uh, reflects a higher gain in the energy efficiency because when we consider that the buffer is, uh, um, is empty at some instance, instance, so the transmission power decreases and uh, then the energy efficiency is maximized. Uh, the last uh, observation here is that Shannon's model is not accurate and it overestimates the effective energy efficiency by more than 20 percent 
compared to uh, Polyaniski's model or the uh, finite block length model. Uh, and these two curves, we also, in the first curve, show that uh, uh, the effective energy efficiency versus the delay limit. And we can see that when we increase the latency uh, limit, uh, the effective energy efficiency uh, becomes higher. So, of course, if, we, if the network can tolerate higher delay, then this will be more energy efficient. And in order to uh, reduce the latency, this uh, will come at the cost of lower energy efficiency. And uh, still here we can see that Shannon's model is not accurate. So this is Shannon's model and this is the finite block length model. And of course, Shannon's model still overestimates the EEE. And here we can see the optimal power allocation, which is the solution of the optimization problem. And uh, Still, we can see that Shannon's model underestimates the optimal power allocation. So it overestimates the effective energy efficiency and underestimates the optimal power allocation uh, in the sense that uh, uh, would, uh, would cause us to waste some power if we apply Shannon's model. Uh, and uh, in this sense, we, um, we are not able to uh, consume the necessary power that would maximize the energy efficiency and maximize the system performance. And uh, uh, we can also say, uh, see that the optimal power allocation becomes higher when the delay limit becomes higher. So uh, when we have more, uh, uh, more, more space to um, increase the latency or uh, to um, uh, extend the delay limit, then we can uh, allocate more power to the network to enhance the network performance. Uh, herein, we uh, also present uh, uh, a proposed uh, um, ARQ3 transmission scheme in the case of non-empty buffer probability. And we can, we can see that if uh, we uh, if the transmitter uh, uh, allocates uh, some retransmissions uh, to the instance when the buffer is non uh, is is empty, so uh, this reflects again in the effective energy efficiency. So uh, here we have the ARQ uh, proposed uh, non-empty buffer probability model, which uh, shows that. Uh, the highest effective energy efficiency with respect to the other basic models, which does not uh, assume uh, uh, adaptive ARQ with respect to the empty buffer probability. Um, and this actually, this problem could be, um, uh, this optimization problem where we uh, determine the optimum error probability for each transmission can be solved using Dinkelbach algorithm. And this is actually a journal paper that, that is now under review uh, in IEEE Internet of Things. Uh, so the details will be uh, available in this paper when, whenever it is accepted. And uh, here we can also see that the power consumption of uh, this model, uh, the empty buffer probability um, adaptive ARQ is the lowest power consumption with respect to the uh, full buffer model and the basic empty buffer probability model. And uh, also we can see that the power consumption increases with the arrival rate. And this is uh, expected because as the arrival rate increases, then we have more packets to transmit. Uh, and now we uh, turn to the second uh, research uh, topic. And uh, this is uh, work that we have been doing with uh, Professor Pitar's group in Alborg University. And uh, this is uh, about traffic prediction uh, in uh, massive IoT and uh, fast uplink grant based on the, this traffic prediction. So uh, actually fast uplink grant uh, has come as an alternative to traditional uh, massive access schemes such as random access. Um, as we know that random access suffers from large signaling overhead and collisions, uh, typically in LTE and LTE advanced. And uh, 
Uh, also, an alternative was time division duplex, which was which is actually inefficient for strict latency requirements, as we have to wait for uh, uh, for for a long time. Uh, each device has to wait for a long time to be granted uh, transmission slot. So, an alternative that was introduced is the fast uplink grant, and this uh, calls for uh, the primitive uh, resource allocation uh, according to traffic prediction. So, the idea is to predict which device of these four devices um, is most likely to transmit. So let's say that the aggregator have uh, the aggregator has two transmission slots, and then it selects the two devices which are uh, most likely to transmit and grants them transmission slots. And then these, these devices are going to transmit. So first comes the uplink grant, and then comes the uplink, the data uplink itself. So the, the problem is to estimate uh, which devices are transmitting uh, depending on the traffic model and the correlation between uh, devices and each other. Um, in our model, we consider, uh, we consider uh, K IoT devices. Uh, and a single ag aggregator. And these KIoT devices are activated uh, or controlled by uh, N uh, independent two state Markov processes. So we have Markovian processes that are activating the IoT devices, and these IoT devices are either transmitting or not transmitting to the common aggregator. And uh, the aggregator has L transmission slots. So let's say that we have the frequency time grid. And then at each time slot, we the aggregator have um, L transmission slots. And then, of course, the number of devices is much higher than the number of available slots. That's, that's why we are trying to estimate which devices are going to transmit and then allocate resources to the devices that have um, highest transmission probability. And in this sense, we have uh, the device activation vector, A, uh, which uh, is formed according to the device index K. And A is equal to 1. It's each element is equal to 1 if the device is active and 0 otherwise. And S also, S also is the state of each Markov process. So this S is equal to 1 if the Markov process is active and equal to 0 otherwise. And QNK is the probability that the Markov process will uh, activate the device or not. And uh, here we uh, analyze the system and uh, we obtain the device activation probabilities using this formula. And uh, then we have the device activation probabilities at time t plus one given the states at time t, the, the, the Markovian states at time t, and then we can predict the future, how, how uh, the devices will be affected in the next time slot, given that the states at this time slot is given by uh, a certain st. And then we uh, apply the forward algorithm, which somehow uh, uh, somehow uh, looks like the Byte-Herbe algorithm in channel decoding, but it's, it's different, of course, but somehow close to it. Uh, and this forward algorithm uh, enables us to uh, um, um, predict the activation, the, the device's activation pattern and with a certain accuracy. And then when the, when the base station or the aggregator predicts the activation pattern, uh, it grants the transmission slots to the devices which have highest transmission likelihood and uh, then when it uh, grants these transmission slots, uh, some devices will not transmit because the estimation is not 100% accurate. Then this, uh, these uh, errors could be corrected uh, in order to improve the accuracy of the estimation of the next time slots. And uh, then we have three evaluation metrics to uh, evaluate the proposed uh, fast uplink scheme. And these are, first one is the regret, which is defined by this equation. And omega is the number of wrong allocations, while uh, g 
is the uh, grant uh, parameter, and she is equal to one if the device is allocated uh, a slot and is equal to zero if the no slot is allocated to device K. And we have the number of missed allocations is gamma. So uh, uh, this regret is the minimum of omega and gamma. And then we plot the regret function for uh, for the fast uplink and time division two clicks on random axis, and as we can see, that fast uplink has the lowest regret, uh, and this means that it's the best performer in uh, in both for both 50 devices and 100 devices. And then we uh, have the average system usage uh, uh, metric, which is the percentage of the resources that are actually used successfully allocated and used for transmission, and also here we can see that the uh, fast uplink grant has the highest system usage, which is close to 95%. Um, while uh, random access is omitted from here because it's the worst performer. Um, of course, when the number of devices is very high, uh, the random access suffers from lots of collisions. So the system usage is quite low and uh, many, many transmission slots are wasted. And this work was actually uh, published in uh, the IMRC this year. Uh, so the, the, the paper is available online if, if anyone wants to see uh, these results uh, in details. And the last one is the age of information uh, of the devices. So this is the average age of information of, of, uh, per device. And as we can see that the, also here for 50 devices, the fast uplink grant has the um, has actually uh, highest uh, age, and this is not good. This is the um, the the cost of uh, uh, of the of using the fast uplink grant in this scenario because uh, actually uh, this happens because uh, some devices have very low activation probabilities, though they are rarely scheduled, and the age becomes very high for these devices. But actually, for very high number of devices, still the age of information of the fast uplink grant is lower than random access. So it's not the worst thing. Uh, and this problem, this fairness issue is an open problem for future research. And uh, uh, so to, to summarize uh, this, uh, this work, uh, we apply the forward algorithm to, to predict the transmission likelihood of each device and allocate devices, uh, allocate resources to these uh, devices using fast uplink grant. And as we can, as we, as we have seen that the proposed scheme uh, outperforms both random access and time division duplex, duplex in terms of regret and system usage. And uh, it maintains the superiority over random access in terms of age of information for massive deployments. However, for less uh, dense network, it's not, it's not the best, but this is a problem for future research. And actually we are trying to address this problem now uh, with the Tarsi group as well. And um, these uh, benefits of uh, efficient traffic prediction could be, uh, uh, could be extended to resource allocation problems in any, any scenarios actually, such as UAV, uh, UAV scenarios and optimum positioning of the UAV or, or the base stations in order to maximize the, the, the network efficiency and these kind of network design problems. Uh, so uh, I know that uh, time is coming close, but I'm going to give a brief, a brief uh, uh, summary of the last, uh, uh, last research topic that we are doing in, uh, in the group. Uh, uh, with, which is the UAV assisted uh, 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 energy efficiency, uh, energy efficient Internet of Things. And this uh, calls for the minimization for, of the peak energy consumption of the IoT devices that are served by UAVs as base stations. So let's have, let's, let's suppose we have this circle of the IoT devices and this base station, this uh, UAV acts as, an, as a base station actually. And, and uh, the, the target is to minimize the, uh, the, the peak energy consumption of these uh, devices. So the maximum, uh, the, 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 the most device that who, who is uh, um, consuming power, so or consuming energy. So it depends on the activation probability of each device and the interference. And so we have this 
optimization problem, minimizing the, the peak energy consumption. And we have the interference threshold and we have the transmit, uh, the device transmit power threshold and the minimum height, uh, minimum flight heights, as we can see, as we can know that uh, these UAVs have minimum height for, uh, for, for flights and uh, antenna beam width. And this problem turned out to be non-convex. And the solution was to transform this problem to a series of geometric problems, which can be solved iteratively. And after solving these problems, uh, we, we got the average uh, uh, peak energy consumption. As we can see that the proposed algorithm by geometric programming has the lowest peak energy consumption when compared to uh, genetic algorithm and uh, interior point methods. And also it has the minimum uh, processing time when compared to, to the other uh, two methods. And uh, this, this is actually a journal paper that was submitted to uh, uh, IEEE journal on selected areas in communications and it's now under review. And once it becomes, uh, it's published either there or anywhere else, it will be available for everyone to see it. And uh, uh, that was all from my side. And I would like to thank you for listening. And uh, uh, then we can go to the uh, Q&A. Um, perhaps if we have time. Thanks, Mohammed. I think you can you can select one one okay. question. Okay. And so select the hardest one, not the easiest one. So. Okay. So uh, I have a question here from. Uh, let Let us go back to the beginning. So I have a question from Irfan and he's, uh, is energy if, if effective energy efficiency a constraint of URLLC? Um, well, it's not actually a constraint of URLLC, but uh, it's, it's important to consider energy efficiency because URLLC devices uh, usually consume, uh, are running on batteries, so it has to be energy efficient. And I can take another short question. The model you assume for EEE considered that source is always activated. What if it is not the case? Actually, we are considering also the empty buffer probability model, which considers that the source is not always activated. And one question from Richard, Professor Richard, and what about using NOMA with the fast uplink to increase efficiency and reduce latency? If the base station knows at least the statistical CSI, it can adequately pair up the users. Actually, I think it's a very good idea. and. Uh, I think I can discuss it with you, Professor Richard, offline. And this is a very good uh, approach that we can consider for, uh, uh, for having multiple users or multiple devices that are transmitting on the same slot. And uh, we can improve the network throughput, of course. So I think that's, that's uh, where I have broken the time limit now. So uh, maybe I can consider answering the other questions offline. Um, later yeah yeah please Mohammed, do, do it so check the the yeah. questions Thank and i think hilary knows well how how those how those questions in zoom works then i think it'll be very nice and then many thanks for the presentation very nice yes and i see that you have learned the portuguese as well so very good <laughs> <laughs> and yeah you can go to the